another a couple of companies also that that do it. Dr. Fauci said there is no magic drug for coronavirus right now, which you would agree. I guess on this issue, well, we'll, we'll, no, I, I think we only is disagree a little bit. Sorry. I disagree. Uh, maybe and maybe not. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. We have to see. Is We're going to know. That, is, it we'll possible, have, is it possible that your impulse to put a positive spin on things may be giving Americans a false sense of hope? No, I don't think so. Presenting I don't preparedness so. right now. No, I don't think so. I think that... Uh, I think it's got you know, uh, the not yet approved drug. Uh, such a lovely question. Um, look, it may work and it may not work. And I agree with the doctor what he said. May work, may not work. Uh, I feel good about it. That's all it is. Just a feeling. I, you know, smart guy. I feel good about it. And we're going to see. You're going to see soon enough. And we have certainly some very big samples of people. If you look at the people, there are a lot of people that are in big trouble. And uh, this is not a drug that, obviously, uh, I think I can speak for a lot of from a lot of experience because it's been out there for over 20 years. So it's not a drug that you have a huge amount of danger with. It's not like a brand new drug that's been just created that may have an unbelievable monumental effect, like kill you. Uh, we're going to know very soon, and I can tell you, the FDA is working very hard to get it out. Right now, in terms of malaria, if you want it, you can have a prescription. You get a prescription. And by the way, and it's very effective. It works. Uh, I have a feeling you may, and, and I'm not being overly optimistic or pes pessimistic. I sure as hell think we ought to give it a try. I mean, there's been some interesting things happened and some good, very good things. Uh, let's see what happens. We have nothing to lose. You know the expression? What the hell do you have to lose? Okay. What, so what do you say the Americans are scared? What do you say the Americans were scared though? I guess nearly 200 dead, 14,000 who are sick, millions, as you witnessed, who are scared right now. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Uh, I think it's a very, very nasty question, and I think it's a very bad signal that you're putting out to the American people. The American people are looking for answers and they're looking for hope. And you're doing sensationalism and uh, the same with NBC and Comcast. I don't call it, I don't call it Comcast, I call it Comcast. Let me just tell for whom you work. Let me just tell you something. That's really bad reporting. And you ought to get back to reporting instead of sensationalism. Let's see if it works. It might and it might not. I happen to feel good about it, but who knows? I've been right a lot. Let's see what happens, John. Can I come back to the science and the logistics? Be the, 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 the units that were ordered, are they for clinical trials or are they for distribution to the general patient uh, population? We are going to, as I understand it, we are going to be taking samples in New York. Governor Cuomo very much is interested in this drug, uh, and they are going to work on it also after they get a certain approval. We're waiting for one final approval from the FDA. We'll see what happens. But we'll use it on people that are not doing great. Or even at the beginning of not the feeling well. Sort of fallen under the and John, what do we have to lose? So this is wait, of, John. It's been out there for so long. We hear good things. Let's see. Maybe it works and maybe it doesn't. I understand all that. I'm just thinking the application here. So that would be under sort of a modified compassionate access. We're doing that, I guess, and that's that's what it's called. Yeah. Yes. Like Dr. Fauci, if you don't mind uh, to follow up on what the president is saying, should Americans have hope in this drug right now? And sir, I, I would like to follow up on Peter's question here. Could you please issue, uh, address Americans in this country who are scared right now? This is a very valid concern that people have. No, there really isn't that much of a difference in many respects with what we're saying. The president feels optimistic about something, his feeling about it. What I'm saying is that it might, it might be effective. I'm not saying that it isn't. It might be effective, but as a scientist, as we're getting it out there, we need to do it in a way as while we are making it available for people who might want the hope that it might work, you're also collecting data that will ultimately show that it is truly effective and safe under the conditions of COVID-19. So there really isn't different. It's just a question of how one feels about it. Is there any reason to believe it's not safe? Uh, well, it, it, certainly as a drug, it, a, any drug, John, has some toxicities. The decades of experience that we have with this drug indicate that the toxicities are rare and they are, in many respects, reversible. What we don't know is when you put it in the context of another disease, whether it's safe. Fundamentally, I think it probably is going to be safe. But I like to prove things first. So it really is a question of not a lot of difference. 
It's the hope that it will work versus proving that it will work. So I don't see big differences here. I agree. Sir, Mr. President, I agree. who are working at home, who have their children in their homes right now, who are homeschooling, doctors who say they don't have the masks they need to do their jobs. Your message to them. My message to the American people is that uh, there is a very low incidence of death. You understand that. And uh, we're going to come through this stronger than ever before. Uh, if you get it, if you happen to get it, uh, it is highly unlikely. It's looking like it's getting to a number that's much smaller than people originally thought in terms of the ultimate, uh, uh, the ultimate problem, which would be death. Uh, my message to the American people is, number one, you've done an incredible job. Incredible. What you've gone through, it's been incredible. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't the fault of 140 other countries where this has happened. Uh, and there is tremendous hope. And I think we're going to come out stronger, better, bigger in every way. I think we're going to be a better country than we were before. And we learned a lot. We learned on reliance, who to rely on, who not to rely on. But our country, uh, our country has been incredible, the way they pulled together, including the fact that I just spoke to Senator Schumer. We had a wonderful conversation. We both want to get to a good solution. But it's been a, a really, for me, watching and seeing people that weren't speaking, getting along well, because we all have one common aim, and that's to get rid of this invisible enemy, get rid of it fast, and then go back to the kind of economy that we had, and maybe even better. Yeah, please, in the back. Um, no, the back, please. Uh, yes. Mr. President, uh, two questions, please indulge me. The first question is, many small businesses are concerned. Sir, should they be? I, I don't know, because I'd have to look at it, possibly, but I find them to be honorable people. Yeah. Uh, I thought the other day you compare yourself, you see yourself as a wartime president right now, leading the country through this pandemic that we're experiencing. Do you really think, you know, going off on Peter, going off on a network is appropriate when the country is going through something like I this? I do, because I think uh, Peter is, uh, you know, I've dealt with Peter for a long time. And I think Peter is uh, not a good journalist when it comes to fairness. But he's asking for your message to the country. Oh, I think it's a good message because I think that the country has to understand that there is indeed, whether we like it or not, and some of the people in this room won't like it, uh, there's a lot of really great news and great journalism, and there's a lot of fake news out there. And I hear it all, and I see it all, and I understand it all because I'm in the midst of it. So when somebody writes a story or does a story on television, and I know it's false. I know it's fake. And when they say they have 15 sources have said, and I know there's no sources. There's no sources. They're just making it up. Uh, I know that. And I call Peter. I call Peter out, but I call other people out, too. And, you know, this is a time to come together. But coming together is much harder when we have dishonest journalists. It's a very important profession that you're in. It's a profession that I think is incredible. I cherish it. But when people are dishonest, they truly do hurt our country. Yeah, in the back.